Hi. Eventide are known for making algorithms that let you take simple sounds and transform them. With the new H90, you can use two of those algorithms at a time. Let's take another example. Let's take a listen to a few more examples of taking a simple sound and running with it. I'll put more of these at the end of this video. Let's listen to just one more, turning a basic sine wave into this. In this video, I'll compare the H90 to the H9. Take a look at the H90's interface, which is much easier to use than the H9. You no longer need an app to program it. I'll cover how H90 works and very quickly take you through all of its algorithms. Before I start, a quick disclosure, Eventide sent me the H90, no money changed hands, and they have no say over the content of this video and don't get to see it before it's published. This channel is funded mainly by viewers who subscribe to my exclusive content and book updates on Patreon, YouTube Premium and Ads, and price check affiliate links in the description, which help the channel regardless of the product you choose to buy. Okay, let's start with a comparison to the H9. There are a few differences between the two. Probably the most important ones are that H90 can run two algorithms at a time in series or in parallel, as opposed to just one algorithm at a time on the H9. Perhaps just as important, whereas on the H9, it's quite a tedious task to dive in and edit presets on the pedal without the companion iOS or computer app. On the H90, it's much quicker and easier to do almost everything on the device itself with a high res screen and three knobs under the screen controlling whatever three parameters are shown on top. So for example, if I wanted to edit the intervals in pitch fuzz, I could easily go into its parameters and just page here, pitch A, pitch B, pitch C. So you change this to this, to this. Yes, there's a companion app for Mac or PC, which I'll show you later, but it's much easier and faster just to dive in and edit these parameters. If we zoom out of pitch fuzz and go back to the program, which is the combination of two algorithms, pitch fuzz and shimmer. You can assign these three encoders to any parameter within either the program or one of the two algorithms. And by pressing these, you get another bank of three parameters. So basically six parameters that are immediately accessible as you play through your set and jump through the uh, different programs, you can always have three parameters directly accessible and it's pretty easy to customize these, just long press and you can choose any one of the program parameters, P here, any of the parameters for the algorithms in slot A or any of the parameters in the algorithm in slot B. Back to the comparison to H9, the inputs and outputs have also been doubled. So rather than either mono or stereo input and mono or stereo output with one expression pedal, you've got four inputs and four outputs letting you use either the two effects slots as totally separate stereo effects in what's called a dual mode, or you can determine the effect routing of both effects internally, either in series or in parallel. So you come in with a mono or stereo pair and you go out with a mono or stereo pair that frees up two outputs and two inputs to use as either two mono inserts or one stereo insert. So you can add two mono external effects in here and place them anywhere you want in the signal path. And yeah, if it's a stereo effect, then you can move it around like this. And you've got quite a few controls uh, for these just place them in different places and for insert one, send, return, mix, and same goes for insert two. If the effects are routed in parallel, then you'll see these uh, two lines here between the two effects 
If I move to a different program and they're in series, you'll see this little arrow here. Speaking of connectivity, you've got two control inputs on the back as opposed to just one on the H9. You can use them for either an expression pedal, control voltage, or a three foot switch expander. And you've got five pin MIDI in and out, in for both clock and to control various parameters if you like using an external MIDI controller. The pitch tracking has been improved along with a few algorithms. Another big new feature is spillover. The internal CPU can actually run four algorithms at a time. So I've got two going on in this program and you can hear the, uh, the tail there. I can then say move to a um, totally different program and notice as I do that, the sound doesn't get cut off and I can play this and then say go back to the other one as this shimmers and seamlessly transition back to this one. You set the transition time in the global settings which you access by pressing these two buttons and you can actually set it to uh, infinite. So say if you've got a looper going on in one program you can have that run forever move to a different program and play on top of that, and it won't stop until you transition to a third program, though at that point it will transition abruptly. A few other differences, you've got four user playlists here with 99 programs in each playlist, as opposed to the H9 where you could only store 99 presets here. And regardless of the user playlists, you can always access the factory playlists from here as well as additional playlists like the original H9 Max playlist. So you don't need to worry about backing up and restoring the factory programs, they're always here. Final difference, a note about licensing. In the past, you could buy three different versions of the H9, either fully loaded, the H9 Max, or less expensive versions, which you could upgrade by buying additional algorithms. Eventide have done away with that in the H90. You get all the algorithms in this one. Obviously it costs at the higher range. I'll put price check links in the description, but as of the making of this video, it costs more than the original H9, but less than two. Okay, so those are the major differences between the two. Let's dive in and take a look at what the interface is like. First, a few terms we'll be using a lot. An algorithm, say in this case, pitch fuzz or shimmer, is basically kind of like a standalone pedal, some of which Eventide actually sells standalone like this one, the Ultra Tap. So if I go into presets and look for uh, delay types and then go all the way to Ultra Tap, I have access to the Ultra Tap pedal in here. And then once you've chosen an algorithm, you can either twist the knobs on the virtual pedal using the parameters function or just browse through different presets. So if I go ahead and say disable pitch fuzz and go into ultra tap. These are different knob positions or uh, presets for the ultra tap algorithm. This one's nice, where are you at? Ultra swell, here we go. So we're in the ultra tap algorithm in the ultra swell preset and I can always go into parameters and edit the different knobs on this preset using the select encoder and the three quick knobs under the screen. So for example, if I wanted to reduce the number of taps here, I could do that. Change the length. As you would edit the knobs or parameters on any pedal. Now there is some overlap, so I wouldn't say you've got 60 totally different pedals in here, but uh, certainly there are quite a few things to uh, choose from and some are very distinctive. Some algorithms have multiple effects. Space time is maybe an extreme example with a delay, shimmer reverb, and uh, a chorus, and you can access all these parameters in here. Anyway, an algorithm is like a pedal or multiple pedals. A preset is how the parameters of that algorithm are configured. And you can see we can browse through these by type, by algorithm, or either factory presets or user presets, presets I've saved. And then when you combine two algorithms into a program, then you can browse those as well, again by list, whether factory or user. And you can search through these lists um, either through all of them or again by type. So say, look for all the combos that have a delay in them or look for combos that use the headspace algorithm, for example. 
So let's very rapidly go through quick examples of every single algorithm in here, and then we'll meet up later for a slightly deeper look at how to use this. We'll go by type and then by algorithm. Band delay is a stereo delay with modulated filters. Bouquet or bucket delay is an emulation of a bucket bouquet delay. Digital delay. Duck delay will duck the delay if you play on top of it. Filter pong, a delay with a filter. Headspace, a multi-head tap delay. Mod delay, combination chorus and delay. Multi-tap, a delay with up to 10 taps. Reverse delay. Pretty self-explanatory. Tape echo and analog tape echo emulation. Ultra tap with up to 64 delay taps. Vintage delay, a lo-fi delay. going through a few presets quickly. Let's take a look at the next type. Distortion, crush station with quite a few crustacean puns. Pitch fuzz, a combo pitch shifter delay and fuzz sculpt a distortion with an envelope follower and compressor weed whacker a two-stage serial overdrive then there's eq compressor which just has one algorithm with a few EQ and compression settings. Obviously you can edit these manually. A looper with just one algorithm, it can loop. You can either control this with multiple switches using an external foot switch, or with one foot switch acting as a one button looper. With one button looping, you hit the foot switch to start recording. Loop. And then you can overdub, uh, double tap to stop, and long press to clear. And there's also undo and redo here if you add more layers. And various loop playback speed and timing options. Moving on to the next category, we've got modulation. There's a chorus algorithm. And quite a few presets even vibe with a tremolo vibe a flanger armadillo is a multi-frequency tremolo Instant flanger, instant phaser. Mod filter is a set of modulated filters. Let's listen to a few presets. Another phaser. Ottawa. A 
Ring Band. Rotary, a Leslie style emulation. Tremolo pan, which is a panning tremolo. And apparently a hidden distortion here as well. Tricera chorus. On to multi, there's just one algorithm here, space-time. Space-time combines modulation, two delays, and a reverb. Let's move on to pitch, crystals, that could be its own video. And it goes on and on, diatonic, which takes into consideration the uh, scale and key you're playing. Pitch shenanigans ensue with H910949. Harpeggiator contains two sequences with up to 16 steps each of pitch shifting. Micro pitch. A vocal doubler and tone fattener. Octaver adds one or two octaves below the tone, but can get wild. Pitch flex, which has a flex control on the foot switch. These new algorithms are optimized for not just pitching one note, but also detecting a few notes in a chord and pitching them properly. And it goes to an extreme with prism shift. So the idea here is that when you play a note, it'll detect it and arpeggiate it in one of a few orders. Prism shift will take one note and do this to it and it'll do it to a chord as well. And you can edit the patterns and uh, the intervals and direction here. Quadravox gives you up to four pitch shifted voices in a scale. You can either play them all at once or arpeggiate them. Next category is reverbs, and there are quite a few of them in here. Black hole. Dual verb to parallel reverbs. And uh, these have both an infinite option and freeze. So freeze 
will freeze the reverb and you can play on top of it and infinite just keep adding to it a verb. Hall. Nice. Let's go through a few presets. Let's move on to another algorithm. Mangled verb, another multi effect with distortion. Mod echo verb. These can go for a while. Plate. Reverse reverb. Room. Shimmer. And you can obviously set the uh, shimmer pitch. SP2016, reverb with echo, spring, tremolo verb, wormhole. And then there's synth with two algorithms. I'm just going to feed this a sine wave. Hot Saws is a six oscillator subtractive synth. It's monophonic with a filter, with resonance, an LFO. Envelope follower. Then there's Synthonizer. This has two voices, a subtractive voice and additive voice. And again, I'm just feeding this a uh, sine wave, so. This is the source audio, and this is the effect. So that was a little taste of maybe one or two presets for each of the algorithms. Let's take a deeper look at how to use this. There are a few modes here which determine what the foot switches do and what these little buttons above the foot switches do. There's select mode for selecting programs. There's perform mode for performing with a program. Then there's bank mode with a long press on select where you can quickly view banks of three programs at a time. Let's start with select mode. You select programs either using the uh, encoder and pressing to choose a program or using the up and down foot switches and selecting like this. In select mode, you can use the foot switch buttons to deactivate the entire program or one of the two slots. So you first select, then disable or enable. In bank mode, these foot switches quickly choose between one of the three programs in the bank. And then in perform mode, the foot switches 
will do whatever is labeled on the screen here. And there are two banks of foot switch functions. You can see this little square here on top, move between bank two and bank one. In perform mode, this foot switch talks to the program, this foot switch talks to the algorithm in slot A, and this one to the algorithm in slot B. So you can bypass the entire program or bypass individual algorithms. And then these buttons let you choose different functions for the foot switch in each of the two pages. And if you see this little M here, it means momentary control, as opposed to a toggle. There are a few default functions for these. So you saw this briefly before, for example, activating inserts or a tap tempo for the program foot switch and a hot switch function for all three. I'll talk about what hot switches are in a second, but for some algorithms, for example, the looper, then there are additional hidden functions here like record, play, stop, or the, um, hang on, where are you at? Here we go the one button looper, which I talked about earlier. Okay, so as promised, let's talk about both the hot switches, which you can easily access here on page two, and the HK, the hot knob over here. So hot in the context of H90 means a single control, whether it's a switch or a knob, that controls one or more parameters at a time, kind of like a macro. If I wanted to control just one parameter, I could always go ahead and reassign one of these knobs. So if in-gain wasn't important to me, long press, and say I wanted to control slot B, algorithm B, um, the delay, say time for delay A. So that's an easily accessible way to control one parameter directly from the perform mode without diving into the parameters. But what if I wanted to control two parameters or more at a time? Let's start with using the hot knob. You go into the parameters of whatever it is that you wanna change. Let's say that I wanted to control both of these at the same time long press on the parameter, then choose the control source. In this case, I could either choose the program hot knob or the slot hot knob. Let's go for the slot hot knob, go back here. And now I've got control over delay mix using the hot knob. Then if I wanted to control this parameter as well, go into here, again, choose hot knob B and exit. And I control both these parameters and an advanced function is to long press this and then page to the right here, I could also choose start and end ranges that I wanted to control. So now I've got a broad range of control for delay mix, but a tighter range for delay A. So that's how you program the hot knob as a macro. And if you want to program the foot switches, you long press the foot switch LED, and then you enter a hot switch programming mode you can see all the parameters in the slot that this foot switch can control, in this case, slot B. And then if you want to have the foot switch change a parameter, you just choose whatever it is, say, uh, delay mix, and then you set the value for that parameter, delay A as well, set the value for that parameter. And now if we exit this mode and go into perform mode, you can see, say in this case, we've got the delay set to whatever, 244, if I press the hot switch, it'll jump immediately to 3000. And then if I disengage, it'll go back to 244. Before we wrap up, let's take a look at a few miscellaneous items. Like I mentioned earlier, the control software mirrors the H90. Just hook up the USB-C port to your computer, and then any changes you make to parameters will be mirrored on the screen and vice versa. Any changes you make on your computer will be mirrored on the H90. You can see, for example, our hot switch assignments here. And you can browse through user lists here if you like and uh, search for effects or programs, look at system parameters, but all of these are things that uh, you can change in the system settings here as well. The software is mainly convenient, I think, for just renaming programs or presets as opposed to using the knobs and of course, exporting programs and presets to your computer. A few other miscellaneous items. If you long press these two foot switches, you get a tuner. You can set the inputs on the back to either line level or instrument level for guitars. Separately from that, you also have a source type, which helps the pitch tracking algorithm hone in on different frequencies and a short tap on these two. So if you go into uh, parameters, short tap on these two, will tell a program to either follow external clock 
or not. Okay, let's wrap up with a few pros and cons for the H90. On the pros side, if you were looking for two H9s in your setup or were frustrated with the fact that you needed an app to fully enjoy the H9, then you're gonna love the H90. If you're considering the H90 compared to other multi-effects, then yes, the reverbs are excellent, but where I think the H90 shines is in the generative craziness that you can get with its pitch shifting and delay algorithms. The H90 is relatively expensive if you're just looking to add modulation, distortion, delays, and reverbs to your sound, but if you want a pedal that will have a dialogue with the sounds you put into it and completely transform them, the H90, I think, is the best game in town. In terms of cons, if the price is right for you and you like what this does to your sounds, it's really hard for me to think of any substantial cons, but since you're here, I'll make an effort. And of course, feel free to chime in with your opinion in the comment section below. So there's definitely a bit of mental overload until you figure out which parameter goes where, when you're controlling a program versus when you're controlling a preset or an algorithm, what the scope of a program is versus the scope of a preset, which parameters are where, what the foot switch and the foot switch LEDs do in the different perform or select modes. It takes a while to get used to all these things. Hopefully this video was useful with that. Also, while I think they struck a good compromise in terms of hands-on controls and accessing pedal parameters, Another set of quick knobs above the screen wouldn't have taken too much space, but would have let you control as many parameters at once as you can on the standalone pedals. Other than that, like I mentioned, I'm hard pressed to think of something that packs as much creative punch per square inch on a pedal board, unless you're going into totally programmable territory like Zoya or Bebo. I do have one wishlist feature though that I think would make this even more awesome. This pedal has four inputs, but currently is designed to process only two audio sources, either mono or stereo, with the sends and return option. But it would be awesome if you could treat the inputs as up to four mono sources with panning levels and sends to the two internal effects. This way the H90 could act as a mixer for a small synth setup and maybe save you the effort of carrying a mixer around to a gig. So that's it for H90. If you like the insights in this video, there are plenty more in my ever-expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Ring the YouTube bell below if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.